Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild today with a beginner's guide going over all the most important tips for when you first start the game. There's been a massive influx of new players recently with the Epic Games free week of Call of the Wild, so I figured it was about time we do another video like this. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. One of the very first things that you will want to do when you first start playing the Hunter Call of the Wild is claiming all of the outposts and lookout towers. This right here is one of the lookout towers on Leighton Lake District which I do recommend as the map that you would start out on. Leighton Lake is a much better map to start out on than Hirschfelden is, so if you're just getting the game, start out on Leighton and immediately start unlocking these lookout towers marked by these icons on the map. Whenever you discover a lookout tower, it will reveal a small area around it that will show where like outposts are and uh, landmarks, uh, different stands and things like that. And the way that you unlock these lookout towers is by climbing clear to the top of them and pressing survey as you get to the top and it will kind of give you an overview of the area. You know, that's actually really interesting that it let me survey again. I, It's never been able to do that before and I can't do it again so that's really interesting. But you know what, it worked out perfectly for this video so I guess it works out. You will notice that whenever you go to a lookout tower and unlock it, you will start to see some of the stuff in the area including outposts, which is what we're going to go to next. Outposts act as many different things and what you're going to want to do to unlock it is by going up to this little flagpole right here and pressing E or whatever the corresponding key may be if you're on console. And then you can use these outposts for many different things including fast travel locations. So what you can do is you can hover over it, click on it and then press fast travel and it will fast travel you to that location. But that's not the only thing as there is a lot of other stuff. We've got the cache right here which allows you to purchase stuff from the store as well as going into your storage and equipping and unequipping different items. You can also access your character tab right here and change your outfit, change your character model, whether you're male or female. You can also go into the trophy manager and take a look at different animals that you have harvested and taxidermized, which we will talk about a little bit further down the line. Then you also have the garage category where if you own the ATV DLC, then you can access your ATVs from here. We've got the kennel for people that own the Bloodhound and you can get your different dogs right here. And also you can choose new dogs to purchase if you'd like and choose kind of like their different uh, uh, coats as well as male or female. As a new player, one of the most confusing things can be the perks and skills. I get so many questions about which ones I use. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. These are the perks and skills that I end up using. We're currently in the skills tab. This is the stalker skills. I end up going with something like this, but to be honest, you can mix it man, you can mix and match it to whatever your liking is, but this is what I end up using. I'd say the ones that are the most important is you obviously want to get your track knowledge up to 3 so you can identify tracks a little bit better and also see more details from them. Uh, this one is also very good. I'm only happy when it rains. It decreases visibility in foggy and rainy weather. You've got soft feet, which helps reduce the amount of noise you make when walking through specific things. You've got the improvised blind, which helps you hide inside of bushes. And you've got endurance, which really helps with keeping your heart rate down. And the final one in here is disturbed vegetation, which essentially makes it so you can pick up a track called disturbed vegetation, which will tell you the fur type of an animal. And because of the fact that there is rare fur types in the game, that's going to be a very important thing to have. We move over to the ambusher skills and we've got a little bit of a different uh, approach on this particular tier. We've got the scent tinkerer, which you have to select in order to get some of the further down ones. I definitely recommend that out of these, the ones that you must go for is spotting knowledge. This will help you get more information about the animal that you're spotting with your binoculars. And then also this one's sight spotting. This makes it so you can spot an animal with your scope instead of being forced to only use binoculars, which can save you a lot of time. Now, as far as the perks go, there's some that you definitely want to go for. All three levels of breath control, uh, the two levels of steady hands, the zeroing perk, and of course, muscle memory. All of these are very important. The zeroing is probably one of the most important perks in the game because it helps you change the different zeroing distances for your rifle and makes it so you don't have to compensate as much for bullet drop over distance. When you unlock both levels, you get the 75 meter zero distance, the 150 meter zero distance, and the 300 meter zero distance. So level one, I believe, gives you the 75 and level two gives you the 300 and 150 is kind of the default. We move into the handgun perks. The only ones that I really recommend going for here is the lightning hands. This one is really, really good. It increases the reload speed of all weapons. 
You also have the Ranger, which is kind of one you just kind of go with to get to there. And then the other one that I do recommend is Sprint and Load because it makes it so you can reload while sprinting. We move over to shotguns. The necessity here is recoil management. Getting level 3 can really help reduce the recoil of all weapons because it's not only for shotguns. The names of these categories can be a little bit deceiving as they're not all just for the category that they're in. Then you've also got fast shouldering which helps you aim quicker which is also very important. And you've got uh, both eyes open which is kind of a necessity in order to get the other stuff. You have to purchase this if you want to get to these so I recommend just putting one into there, one into here. And then uh, getting all of these maxed out right here. I personally don't use anything in archery because I don't use bows a lot. But if you do like bows, you can always work some of these into your build and remove a couple from one of the others. One of the questions that I get from new players the most is how do you find so many animals? I can barely find any. And the biggest thing to help you find lots and lots of animals is need zones. Now what we're looking at here is a drink zone for white-tailed deer. They're actually just now leaving it as it is the end of the time. But a need zone will look like this on your map and it'll show you the time and the species of the animal down there. And that'll help you know exactly where you need to be at the specific time to find that specific animal. And so what a lot of longtime players do is they hunt the drink zones for animals. Drink zones are by far the easiest zones to hunt and we tend to focus on those primarily whenever we're hunting because it's just the fastest and easiest way to see the most animals possible. You can find pretty much every single animal's drink time and uh, resting time and feeding time just by a quick Google search. So there's definitely lots of information out there to help you find the animal that you're wanting to find. And I definitely recommend that if you want specific maps for different species to go check out ProXCK's channel. He does some phenomenal guides for specific animals and uh, specific reserves. So if there's one in particular you want to know where to like find a different animal or just in general where all the animals are located on a map then that's going to be the best place to go. He does an incredible job and I definitely recommend it. When you're getting lined up on an animal, you're going to want to make sure they are completely broadside, which means essentially with their side facing you. That is going to get you the clearest shot to make a nice vital hit. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about where you need to aim exactly and also uh, what are the vital organs of an animal. So this is a really good example of a broadside shot right here. The deer has its side to us. And what we're going to do now is aim right behind the crease in the shoulder. This will ensure that we do end up hitting the lungs. Now something to note is you probably will not drop them this quickly at first. I'm using a rifle that is much more powerful than you'll be starting with. So they will not drop on the spot most likely, but they will not go far. And now that we have got into the claim screen, let's go over some of the stuff that you're going to see in here. I mean, first of all, you can see that uh, there is a x-ray of the animal which kind of shows off the different organs and you can use this to figure out where you need to aim on each animal. Let's say you make a bad shot, just take a look at the x-ray and take note of where the organs are placed. In order to get the full metal score of the animal, you do want to hit vital organs, shoot it two times or less and use the proper rifle. For this uh, white-tailed deer right here, he is a class 4 so that means we got to use a ammo that covers class 4. The 308 just happens to cover classes 4 to 8, so this is the perfect gun to use for them. I also recommend always using the polymer tip bullets. You can purchase those from the shop. Polymer tip bullets are going to give you much more penetration to get to those lungs than a soft point would, so it's definitely the round you want to go with. Now this down here is what we call a metal rating. Diamond is one of the highest rankings you can possibly get aside from the Great Ones, but Great Ones are something that we will not talk about in this video in particular because it's a bit more of a advanced thing to go for. So if you guys want a part two, kind of focusing on tips for long-term players for the end game, then let me know. Every animal in the game has their own scoring system, so the scores you see right here are going to differ from species to species. For Whitetail, 255 is Diamond. Now, something else that is worth noting is every single animal has a different max level. White-tailed deer max at level 3, so if you see a level 3 white-tailed deer, there's a good chance that it could make diamond, provided you reach all of these harvest checks right here. Proper ammo for this animal, animal shot two times or less, intact trophy organs, and hit one vital organ or more. Whitetail may go to level 3, but you'll see other species that go to different levels, so it can get a little bit confusing. For example, black-tailed deer go clear up to level 5, and something like a black bear goes clear up to level 9. 
And again, all you really need to do to find what the max level is for every single animal in the game is just go to Google and type in Call the Wild all max level animals. And if I remember to, I'll probably link some websites that show all of this information for you guys so you can see that right down in the comments section. The next thing you'll probably notice on this screen is this button that says taxidermize. So what you can do is for a fee, you can taxidermize the trophy and put it up in your trophy lodge. Now the game comes with one trophy lodge for free and then you have to purchase all the other ones as DLC but the free trophy lodge allows you to put one animal of each species from Leighton Lakes and one animal of each species from Hirschfelden as well as one mount that you can put literally anything on and the way that you access those is through the trophy lodges tab right here you can click down on Leighton Lake trophy cabin and then click create lodge I've already created mine uh, right here so it's not going to let me create another but you can do that right with this uh, little button right here and then if you really want to you can purchase the DLC lodges as well something else I get so many questions about is what are the best DLCs to purchase if you're a brand new player and I personally would recommend going with a few of them to start out Sasiki Safari Trophy Lodge is a must-have if you want room to place literally any diamond or rare that you end up getting it'll definitely be a really helpful one Another thing I probably should mention is you don't necessarily need to purchase the reserve DLCs when you first start. You can play any of the reserves for free in multiplayer provided one of the people in that multiplayer session owns the map. So if you don't want to purchase any of the reserves, you can just go to multiplayer and play them for free, which is a really cool feature. As we go over to the hunting equipment category, some of the ones I would recommend is the modern rifle pack as this does come with the 308 that I was just using. It comes with the 223 AR as well as the 22 AR, but the main reason you want to get this is for the 308 and the 22. Another one I recommend if you're on PC is to get the Tents and Ground Blinds DLC. If you're on console, this comes with the game, so you won't have to worry about purchasing it, but if you're on PC, you will need to buy this one. It helps you put up mobile fast travel locations that are very, very helpful to have. You can have up to 16 of them on the map, and it really is just a lifesaver. Now you have the tree stand and tripod pack, which the tree stands and tripods help you reduce the amount of hunting pressure that you create by killing animals. Whenever you kill an animal, you'll notice a pink blotch comes up on the map and it stays there for a little bit until you've hunted other parts of the map. And that is called hunting pressure. If you hunt a certain area a lot, you'll probably end up seeing animals just kind of steering clear of that area. So if you end up shooting, let's say, four animals out of the same herd, you'll create enough hunting pressure to where whatever need zone they were in will disappear and move to another area. And then you will end up having to re-find that zone, so it's definitely good to get the tree stand and tripod pack to help keep that hunting pressure down. Then we've got the hunter power pack, which I definitely recommend if you are a new player. This is a very good one to get. It's got the 7mm bolt action. It's got the 308 bolt action and it has the 338 bolt action. I would recommend this one even more than the modern rifle pack because this has everything you could possibly need as a brand new player. As for trophy lodges, like I said, Sasiki Safari, I would choose over Spring Creek Manor. It's just better value, so that's definitely the one to go with there. And then we've got the Bloodhound DLC, which you definitely can go with if you're a new player. It will help with tracking as... Early on, it can be kind of difficult to track down animals sometime, especially if you end up making a bad shot and you're not used to kind of how the tracking system works. This can be a great DLC to help you out. And that is going to conclude our basic guide for the Hunter Call of the Wild. Now, this is only part one. Like I said, if you guys have some more tips that you'd like me to include in part two, leave them in the comments. This was meant to just be kind of an introduction to the basics of the game. So it's not going to include every single tip that I could possibly give. But I appreciate everybody dropping in and watching. If you're new to the channel and this was helpful, consider subscribing as it helps me out just as much as hopefully this helped you out. But thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.